Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you the three different ways you can generate pages or create pages within Gatsby. Now, I've already created a Gatsby project to demonstrate this, and I've hooked it up to Dato CMS, but that's not important. What is important is that I've got a bunch of queries already for data that I can query. So I already have a bunch of blog posts. So I'm going to quickly query in the graphical tool here for all data CMS, where is it? All data CMS blog posts and nodes and slug and title. So I'm going to hit play on that and we can see I've got three example blog posts. My first blog post, my second blog post, my third blog post. Now I want to generate pages based on these blog posts and using the slug. So I want to use the slug as part of the URL for that page. So just to show you, I've already got in Visual Studio Code here, I've already got a example project set up. So in source and pages, you can see I've just got the default pages in here from the Gatsby starter. So let's quickly go to localhost 8000 and I want to go slash my third blog post just to show you that this is a 404 page. So this actually doesn't exist at the moment in my Gatsby project. So the first way is the most obvious way and that is in source and pages. We can create a new file and call it my third blog post .js. Let's import react from react. Let's export. Actually, let's go const blog post equals return. Let's just return h1 third blog post and export default blog post. Let's save that and now refresh in the browser and we can see that route now exists. So for third blog post, all I needed to do was create my dash third dash blog dash post and it would create a page at that particular URL. However, this particular URL isn't actually being generated from my data in data CMS from this page query. It's just a hard coded template or component that we're using and just displaying the third blog post for this URL. So that's the first way we can just create pages in here in the source pages directory. And whatever we name our file will be the URL for that particular page. Now, if we needed nested pages, we could just add folder in here. Let's go blog. And then in here, then let's go my second page.js. Let's just copy everything in the third blog post. Let's go second page. And that's fine. If we go to the browser now, and if we go to localized 8000 slash blog slash my dash second dash page, we can see we've got the second page. So we're rendering that component there. So that's useful if we want to hard code a particular page at a particular URL. So we just create a file name with whatever we want to call the root or the URL for that particular page. And if it's a nested URL, we could just add it in a folder. So we've got blog and the name of our file. So this is a good segue then into the Gatsby file system root API. So instead then of hard coding the name of this file and expecting my second page to show up here. So remember what we can do is we can base this file name on any of our queries within Gatsby. So for this to work, we need to select these types of queries where it'll return a single instance of our data types. So for example, it, this data CMS blog post will return one blog post. The all data CMS blog post will return many blog posts. So we want to use the all data CMS blog post and we can see we've got slug on here exactly like before. So what we can do then is let's copy this data CMS blog post within blog. Then let's create a new file, but instead of hard coding the file name here, we can open up a set of curly braces. We can go data CMS blog post dot slug and then append dot JS to it. Let's copy the contents of that second page just for simplicity and let's go generated page. And now let's take a look in the browser to see if we go blog and if we go blog slash my third blog post, we can see we're rendering the generated page. And within this page, it's injecting the ID. So this ID, if we go to if we console log the props, let's console log props and check it out in the console then for the generated page. We've got our props here. Let's open it up for page context. We have the ID for this particular page. So we can use this ID then 
in any of our GraphQL queries. So if we wanted to query for data CMS blog post and filter by ID, for example, so make sure ID is equal to, actually let's go to my second blog post because that would also have been generated. Let's grab the ID from page context. Let's copy the ID there. So ID is equal to la 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 and hit play on that and we've got my second blog post. So we can use this ID then to query for this particular blog post and query the relevant data that we need to render for this particular blog post. Now, let's move on to the third way we can generate pages in Gatsby, and that is using Gatsby Node. So within Gatsby Node then, what we can do is exports.createPages, and this create pages is a function that Gatsby expects might be exported from Gatsby Node. So it knows then to inject relevant actions for you to be able to create pages dynamically based on any of your data. So as well as destructuring actions from this create pages, we also want to destructure GraphQL because we want to query now, if we take a look back in graphical, we want to query for all our data CMS blog post. So let's get that then, the all data CMS blog post, nodes, slug, title, and let's go ID as well. So it's this query that we want to copy. So let's copy that query. Let's go const data equals await graph QL, paste in our GraphQL query there. And actually let's rename this to result because so, what we'll have is result.data. So we'll have result.data.alldatacmsblogpost.nodes. So we want to loop over these nodes and create a page based on this slug. So for result then, let's go underneath this create page here then. Let's go post dot nodes so you can see it here all data cms blog post dot nodes so we want to go dot for each so for each blog post we want to call the create page action and specify a path for this page now just so you can see the difference between each of the page generation techniques i'm gonna prefix this path with blog dash gatsby dash node bit of an ugly url but just so you can see the difference between all the page generation techniques. And then we're gonna go blog post dot slug. So then for context, we're going to leave that empty for now. And the component we want to render is going to be, let's use, or let's create a new template then. Let's create a new file in here. Let's call it blog post dot JS. Let's actually, let's just copy everything from the second page again into blog post dot JS. And instead of second page, let's go generated from Gatsby node. In Gatsby node then, let's require that page. So we need to go require dot resolve and we want to go source templates blog post dot JS. And we're probably going to need to rerun Gatsby develop here because we've made changes to Gatsby node. So once that's finished compiling, let's refresh localhost 8000 in our browser. And now we should have blog, or hang on, what was it? Blog Gatsby node. So blog dash Gatsby dash node slash my dash first dash blog dash post. And there we go, generated from Gatsby node. So that's the three different ways you can generate pages in Gatsby, you've got the first one where you can hard code the file name in the pages directory and any subdirectories of pages. We can use the Gatsby file system routing API to base the root or the file name off of a GraphQL query that we have. And the third way is via Gatsby node using the create page action. So if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and please comment down below if you wanna see more Gatsby tutorials. For example, if you want to see deploying Gatsby to Gatsby Cloud or Netlify or using Gatsby Cloud functions or any other React tutorials, let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know which is your preferred method of page generation in Gatsby. I think my favorite one is this file system API way. So if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video.